Hi everyone, this is Anta Chavez with Be Latina News, and today we're talking to Danielle Zig, who's an amazing Latina entrepreneur and also the co-founder and CEO of Coconut Cartel. So she's going to be telling us all about her career and basically how she got to Forbes 30 under 30, which is a really um, recent uh, news and, and really awesome for her. So I can't wait to congratulate her and to talk about it. Let's... Um, right in. Hello. Hey, Danielle. How are you? Good. Let me Good. fix this a little bit. How are you? I'm doing well. And you? I'm doing awesome. Can you hear me all right? Is that the question of 2020? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. I can hear you well. Where are you right now? Are you in Miami? I am. I'm home (laughs) in my living room. (laughs) You know, staying staying safe. How about you? Yeah. I, well, I'm from Miami, but right now I'm in Arizona. Oh, cool. Yeah. And surprisingly enough, it's a little chilly, hence the sweater. So, yeah. That's new for me as a kind of a Miamian. <laughs> what part of Miami are you from? Kendall. Kendall? Okay. I'm in Coconut Grove. Not too far. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything, my work life and student life, everything was around Pro Gables and Little Havana and everything. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so let's, let's jump right in. Um, Do it. I always like to ask my guests to introduce themselves, so I don't use any labels that, you know, you don't use for yourself. So <laughs> if you can tell everyone who you are and what you do, that'd be awesome. Sure. Um, well, I, my name is Dan, Danny Zig. I go, Danielle Ziggleboim is the long version, but Danny Zig is what I go by. Um, I am a co-founder and CEO of Coconut Cartel. So this is a company uh, I started along with my brother. So we're both co-founders of the company. Um, and we love rum. I grew up in Guatemala drinking rum. So I feel that. <laughs> yeah. So here we are with our own rum brand to bring the best of Guatemala to, uh, to the rest of the world. Awesome. Yeah. And so what is exactly, um, the coconut cartel? Can you tell us about how it started? Yes, I can. It's, it's, it's quite the story. Um, we started off Coconut Cartel really in, in coconut water. You know, my brother and I, we grew up in, um, in Central America. We grew up between El Salvador and Guatemala. So we grew up around agriculture. We had yeah. coffee, cacao, coconuts, sugar cane, corn, beans, bananas. I mean, everything that we, that we live off of, um, we can grow it there. So we grew up around farms and that's where a lot of our interest was in. You know, we grew up drinking, like the first thing that I had, I remember as a kid in El Salvador, um, was like a piece of sugar cane and like shaved it off and I would eat it straight from the, from the sugar cane, right? So always an interest in, in, in agriculture. Um, so we started Coconut Cartel actually in the coconut water business uh, in 2012. So my brother and I started by quite literally smuggling coconuts like these little brown coconuts in our suitcases from El Salvador to Miami um, so that people could drink coconut water out of a coconut the way that we grew up drinking it not out of a box right yeah. um, and so it was like a literal like smuggle right it was like the story is so real and that's really where the name coconut cartel came from because we were like doing this little coconut smuggle like a cartel um, and then we you know we segued into rum because of again it's just sort of something that we grew up around something that we loved growing up Um, obviously when we were old enough to enjoy it and, uh, coconut water and rum are two best friends that, uh, go together that people in Latin America and the Caribbean, we grow up drinking a coconut first coconut spiked with rum. That's like a traditional drink. Um, and yet in the United States, coconut rum tastes like copper tone. So it was like, sort of like an awkward, (laughs) an awkward thing that we were trying to debunk and just give people a natural marriage between rum and coconut um so we created coconut cartel special uh which is a blend of añejo rum so it's up to 12 years aged traditional guatemalan rum like the real good stuff barrel like barrel age a lot of oak and uh and vanilla and caramel the traditional flavors that you get from a sipping rum from guatemala or centro america um but we use the fresh coconut water that we 
harvest in the area to cut the blend. So basically that means in a barrel, alcohol, any alcohol, if it's being barreled, there's a high percentage of alcohol. You don't drink it at that high proof. Some people do, but you don't generally. You drink it at 40%. 60% of a, any alcohol bottle is water. Um, so we use <laughs> yeah. coconut water to do that diluting process. It's called mm -hmm. proofing. Um, so the coconut water is sort of part of the DNA of the rum. And so you sip it on the rocks um, and you start, you feel like you're drinking, you know, a coconut with really good rum in it. And it doesn't have any like, you know, copper tony flavors. It doesn't have any like added, you know, artificial ingredients. And so it's insanely delicious. It's representative of our, of our, you know, what we grew up around of the agriculture. And it's just so true to Guatemala. So um, that's really the long story actually condensed quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds really delicious. I mean, I am originally from Venezuela. And rum Santa is Teresa. our thing. Like, yeah. yeah. So I could not wait to try it. Um, it's a I lot of people who like Santa Teresa like this because it has that same like Spanish style um, dry sweetness rum. to it, I bet. Right? What? The sweetness to it, it, it must be there too, right? It's not super sweet, to be honest with mm. you. It's actually more dry. It's people describe it as like a tropical whiskey. So mm. that's why the people from Venezuela really like it because it's on whiskeros. They like it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah. 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 I love that. And that's a really funny story, how it started and everything. Um, it now was I get crazy. The name. Yeah. Now it's real. It's totally a real coconut cartel. We, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah yeah and so I know you you've talked uh, a little bit about it but how do you think uh yours and your brother's identities came into play when you created the brand and and everything that comes into it oh my god this brand and this product is my brother and I like it's just everything about us is this product um starting off with I guess let's start with Miami right Miami is like mm -hmm. the center of Latin America at this point right like the capital of Latin America we're all kind of here we have a foot in the door here but my brother and I we were born here in Miami um and then we moved to El Salvador when we were really young um so both places growing up in both places um my mom is from Guatemala my dad's from Venezuela so Latin background in Miami um my mom and my dad grew up here in Miami in like the 70s and 80s. Um, hmm. And so my grandmother still lives here. And uh, so we grew up and always loved Miami aesthetic. So, you know, not the cheesy flamingos and neon lights, but more so the beautiful sort of art deco buildings that we have, uh, hmm. the history, uh, our waterways, the sports, like there's just nuanced things about Miami that we grew up loving. Um, mm -hmm. And so we wanted to put that on a pedestal and create a product that anywhere in the world was representative of Miami and not just Miami, but the Latin part of Miami, because it makes up such a big part of this city. Um, so aesthetically, this bottle is very Miami from the pelicans on it. I'll show you. Yeah has pelicans on it, which are, you know, stuccoed on, they're stuccoed on my grandmother's house. Like on the side of her house, she has like pelican shapes. And uh, obviously on all architecture, our deco architecture, we have pelicans. Um, then the blue, the, the pink and the yellow or orange color is sort of more like our sunsets. Um, and then the, ta the, the label up here, the neck label, it looks like, like a Cuban cigar uh, tax label, mm -hmm. right? So this is like Miami in a bottle. The juice is from Guatemala. So it's sort of like our, our background, right? We're Miami, but we're from Guatemala. Um, and so, and, and all the flavor profile in it are from Guatemala. So it's like exactly us. Like I can't even, it, it couldn't be a more, like a bigger embodiment or more precise embodiment of ourselves than, uh, than this product it really is just like a mishmash people don't get it like I don't get it it's like a brand from Miami but it's from Guatemala and it's like it's me I'm from Miami but I'm from Guatemala and I grew up yeah. in all these places and I like these flavors so it's 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 so representative of us yeah and, and it's also really cool because it the home of the product you know where it was born it was in between Guatemala and Miami so it has those both uh things that mix that yeah. made it what it is now yeah. yeah, totally. It has, has pieces of, of both of it. And it's so real for the city. 
everybody here and no but no one's from Miami everyone's like from somewhere else so yeah. uh it's that's that's just who we are we're Latinos in, in America and Miami <laughs> yeah yeah and so um I also am really excited about talking to uh, you about Forbes 30 under 30 list. Congratulations. Thank um, you. <laughs> that was yeah. really exciting. Can you tell us about your journey to this point in your life? Did you ever think of yourself as a, an entrepreneur? And like, how did you get to have such a successful career at such a young age? The truth is that I've always seen myself as an entrepreneur. Um, my family is multiple generations of displaced so mm -hmm. diasporas from all over the world ending up in Venezuela and Central America here and they are all entrepreneurs um, so I didn't grow up with parents or grandparents who you know had like you know a company that they were with for 30 years that was sort of like that family allegiance to you know a, a some sort of workplace I just didn't have it I saw my dad hustling like crazy his whole life my grandparents, same story. My mom, same story, just like hustling all the time. So it was like, I didn't know any better, number one. Um, number two, I was always the lemonade stand kid. Like I was just selling something, like whether it was like lemonade when I was like super young or like sopitas, like in, in high school, I would sell these little like calditos in like my senior year. I'd come to school with like a thermos with calditos and sell these little soups no. to people. Like anything, I swear. Um, and then I... I didn't, I know my grandmother always said to me, my brother and I, if you're going to do a business, do something in food because you're always going to need food. So I had that in the back of my mind. Um, and then I, you know, I went off to a school. I actually went to college at a school that prides itself on being, uh, they basically almost like made up what is the curriculum to teach entrepreneurship. It's a school called Babson College. It's a tiny school in Boston, right, right outside of Boston. Yeah, it's super small. I mean, we have like, I think 2,000 people per grade or less. I mean, it's very, very small. Yeah. But it's really cool because they teach you, you know, me coming in there with that, like, sort of like, I want to be a business owner. I want to start something. Um, they teach you all the skill sets um, that you need to have the mindset of an entrepreneur. So, like, I can shift my focus from accounting one day to marketing the, the next hour to uh, sales. Like, I just... Mm -hmm. I can do it because they gave me the, the tools to do it. So it's a 29 years in the making yeah. <laughs> of like education and experience and seeing the example around me. So I didn't make it here. It's, it's not a, it's not an overnight success whatsoever. It's a lot of blood, sweat and tears and people and support and education and everything that made it happen. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really and passion. Journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Passion for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. I actually, path. I went to, I went, to, <laughs> I went to Wellesley College, and oh. so everywhere, yeah, everyone there who wants to be a business owner or like start their own thing, that's where they go because you know we can cross. Um, yeah, I took courses at so. Wellesley. I took sustainability yeah. classes at at Wellesley. There you go. So this I know so cool. every one of my friends who wanted to start something, they would go to Babson to take a class. So. That's hilarious. Yeah, we're sort of, uh, that's what we do. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. We like yeah. grew up down the street from each other. Yeah. And both, yeah, yeah, in Miami and in college too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So as a business owner now, what have been some of the most like challenging and also most rewarding experiences so far challenging i mean i think the most challenging thing of being an entrepreneur is waking up in the morning and prioritizing and strategizing what you need to do to move the needle that day cuz you don't have like somebody saying to you you know here's a list of to do's and then you get a gold star at the end. There's none of that. There's so little recognition that comes to you and it takes years and years of just head down and believing in what you're doing and believing in yourself and surrounding yourself with people who believe in what you're doing and work towards the same thing to like make little baby steps every day. And then finally something like the Forbes 30 under 30 thing happens 10 years later. <laughs> so you're like, oh wow, like I'm doing it. I've <laughs> been doing it. I'm doing it, but otherwise, 
I think that's the most challenging part. And like people can give up very easily because you just don't have every day that like, instant satisfaction. Um, yeah. And then the most satisfying part of it is also just the fact that like, thinking of like, I created this for myself and no one's going to take it away from me. I mean, there's been instances where maybe somebody might try, but um, <laughs> it's my thing. And, and I've learned so much. I'm like, I say like, I'm like, really like, come at me with anything. Like I'm a beast, like come at me with anything. Like I'm going to figure out this problem because I've seen so much of it that there really is nothing that the, at this point I think could like <laughs> discourage me. It's usually you're always just discouraged and you just keep going. So that's the, the, the bright side of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I bet there have been a bunch of mentors in your life, you know, throughout these 29 years, uh, who have helped you get here. Can you think of any of them? Uh, people who have guided you at any point in your life? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it starts off in my house. Honestly, mm -hmm. first, it starts off with my the women in my family, my grandmother and my mother. Um, it starts off, like I said, as a you know, from a young age, by example so seeing you know having a female-led home um where they're doing whatever needs you know they need to do to make it happen for you to make sure that i had the right education that i had the right opportunities that anything that i ever wanted to do i could do i was never told no you can't try doing that so it starts there the mentorship of my mom and my grandmother um and then in my professional uh you know world i would say like I love watching, well, I would start with sports. I grew up watching Serena Williams. I love tennis. So I grew up, you know, watching her and, um, you know, recently in the last five years after she had a baby, like struggle to come back from that as a mother and still be and strive to be number one. So I, I look to her as well as like a far away mentorship example, right? To someone that I look up to. Um, and then internally in my world, um, I have just a group of people that uh, we're like a group. I like to say that we're like, we're like a squad. We're a group of entrepreneurs who are all doing very similar things. And we feed off of each other um, mm. because we're going through the same things. And that has been really helpful for me. So I can, you know, pick up the call and be like, hey, you know, what are you doing about this? Or what are you doing about that? And we'll, we'll we're, there's no there's no ego in it. We're all struggling and we're all trying to make it happen. So having that, that group um, there is, is really impactful for me. Um, and then I have advisors also. Um, one of them specifically is a huge advocate of Latina empowerment. Um, she's a chef uh, locally here in Miami. Her name is Ingrid Hoffman. Um, and she's mm -hmm. just constantly um, motivating me as a Latina woman in business to take a chance, like get out there, um, you know, going into a boardroom, I've walked into boardrooms where it's all men and I'm walking in yeah. with like a backpack and a tie dye jacket, jean jacket, and like getting the stare down, like, who, who is this girl? What is she doing here? Right. You have to have those voices in the back of your head from someone like an Ingrid Hoffman or, you know, another woman that's like, like, don't listen to the chatter. Don't pay attention to what's going on here in the room. Like you make your ask. And you know what, when you make your ask, you get what you want. And sometimes it's like really, uh, you, you you're surprised by it and and the people in the room are also just kind of like I dig it I'm into it like okay this girl's out of her <laughs> mind but like I'm down right you know so you gotta you just gotta go for it so uh those, that's I guess the trajectory of people in my life that have helped me help me get here and then I have my girl Lena who works with me side by side and she's my every day yeah. so we're we're a girl gang <laughs> yeah yeah I love it and it's really beautiful how it it starts in your home and as you grew up, like you said, you always felt like an entrepreneur. And that's probably because of the women in your uh, family who made you, you know, who helped uh, make you feel confident enough to feel that way from the very beginning. Yeah, and you can't do it alone. You got to people have to like push you over. You're like, you can do it. You can be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I can do it. And you do it. <laughs> Yeah, and now that we're talking about that, um, I would love for you to give some advice to young Latinas who really want to start in their own business um, and they really don't know where to start or if they should even. Hmm. So many, so much advice. Number one advice, get a good lawyer. <laughs> Not kidding. Not kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. If you have an idea and you want to do something, you got to have some good legal advice. And that's just nitty gritty details, devils in the details. But 
that's one but well, that's the, yeah and I'm, I'm not and I'm, tr- I'm really I'm trying not to be like cheesy here and they're like find your passion and like go for it no you want to talk real deal here's the real deal you surround yourself by super smart people who when you hit them up and they give you advice like you can trust them on that so if you do have a passion and something that you love and you want to you want to make a business of it there are going to be so many challenges that come up but you can do it with the right team. So surround yourself by the smartest people. Um, and that comes from lawyers and accountants and like all the like, eh, you know, kind of boring stuff. You need that. Um, surround yourself by people who it's all the, it's all who you surround yourself with. I think that's the number one tip. It's just like surround yourself with the right people um, who are going to believe in you. And because it's, you know, it's a challenge. So find a, uh, as a Latina, I think right now also, we're in a really awesome spot where like we have the spotlight, right? Like everyone's looking at like people of color, what are, you know, what we finally have the spotlight to like do and shine. So like, take that, like take the opportunity to be like, I am a Latina and I have this, you know, thing because people are going to give you, uh, give you the spotlight right now. So, so take it um, and bring your team along with you because it's a, it takes a village, but don't do it alone (laughs) would be my biggest advice. There you go. And get a lawyer. (laughs) Part of the team. They're part of the team. But yes, get a lawyer because when you start being successful, the vultures come out. Yeah. So you got to have your team members ready there with your boxing gloves on. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, you got to give... Is that too cartel I'm so, sorry. <laughs> you got to give the real advice because nobody's going to tell you real. that. I'm just keeping yeah. it real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's go ahead and show our audience... Uh, what Coconut oh. Cartel looks like. I'm yes. excited. Do you want to make, a, should I make a drink? Yeah, I All would right, love gonna, that. I wish I could adjust, taste it. <laughs> I'm going to try to adjust this. Give me one second. Adjust it a little bit. No worries. No worries. Because I had to. There we go. And I'm going to sit for this so that we can. All right. So my favorite drink. So this is a rum that you drink neat or on ice. It's a sipping rum. It's not like, you can drink it with Coca-Cola. Like, I love a rum and Coke, don't get me wrong. But this is yeah. what it's meant for. So a drink that goes awesome with it is a, in an old-fashioned. An old-fashioned is, like, really simple. Like, you don't need too much. So we actually made these cute kits Let's see. that come oh, with... Oh, I love it. They come with, like, everything you need to make an old-fashioned. So we have... Um, and it's really cute for, like, gifting um it comes with bitters so you have like three flavors of bitters it comes with this little case of sugar cubes cute it's like on the go you can take this on a plane if you want so we have our bitters we have sugar i'm going to take these all out and get ready and then it even comes with this adorable little linen coaster Look, you can put your drink on a little linen coaster because we fancy. Aww, I we love fancy, it. Fancy girl. Okay. And then it comes with like a little mixing spoon. But I have my own mixing spoon. It's a little bigger, so we'll use that. Okay. So prepping my station. Okay. So what you need yeah. if you want to make a drink, you can make it in a glass already, but I'm going to make it in a mixing glass. Um, okay. So we're going to start off with our sugar cube. Okay. And you are going to put that in the glass and we're going to drop the bitters in there. So I'm going to put about two to three little dashes of each bitter. And we have like, you can go crazy with this, like really whatever bitter you have, but I like to use bitters right now in the winter time that are like earthier. So like there's like chocolate bitters, uh, coffee, cardamom, stuff like that, which also happens to grow in Guatemala. So you know, keep it, we're <laughs> just keeping saying. the theme. We're just keeping the theme. So I'm going to put a couple dashes of each. Oops. Don't do that at home, kids. Okay. <laughs> okay. And do you, sheep, do you ship all these things um, across the country? Yeah, so we... Uh, we do. We have a network of like retailers who will ship out to you. So you can go to shopcoconutcartel.com and you can buy the bottles, you can buy the kits, you can buy awesome. hats, um, and we'll ship them out to you. And we make it to like 40 somewhat states. Um, nice. So this is like a cute, super cute 
Christmas gift. Like, we're killing yeah. it with Christmas gifts. Like, seriously, a bottle and, like, a little cocktail kit. It's adorable. Okay. So then we're going to – you have the bitters and the sugar in here, and you're going to use – I have a mixing spoon that has like a little flat bottom, but anything you have to like crush it up. And you're gonna wanna crush up your sugar with the bitters and you might need a little water too um, to dilute it well. So feel free to throw in a little water because alcohol will not dissolve sugar very easily. <laughs> you may need a little bit more bitters to do that. Okay. Ooh, some people here want the hats. Holiday gifts, you can get it. Oh. Shopcoconutcartel.com, my people. Support yeah. the cause. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> once you have that pretty good and mashed up, you are going to measure out. Oh, let me take an open bottle. I have an open bottle here. You're going to measure out two ounces. So if you have a measuring cup, you're going to okay. want to use this. This is about an ounce and a half. So I'm going to measure out first an ounce and a half. I'll use the other side for a little, a little more. All right, so we have about two ounces in here of rum. An old fashioned is usually made with like whiskey or bourbon or rye, um, but an old with a rum old fashioned is like way better. Okay, so we're gonna mix this up a bit here, and we're also going once we dilute a little bit more of the sugar. I'm gonna fill up my glass with ice. We're gonna cool it down before we serve it. All right, so I'm going to fill it, it up. It looks so good. It's so good. It's, like, super boozy, too. So, like, super boozy. But it's, like, yeah. iced tea. It tastes like iced tea, I swear. So good. All right, so now we're going to cool this down. So we're going to shake it for, or we're going to stir it, not shake it. Stir it for about 20 seconds. What do you got going there? Uptown George, what are you saying? Supporters. Yep. <laughs> Some people here order a bottle. There you go. <laughs> All right, that's enough stirring. Okay, then we're gonna have our glass, like a fresh glass, a rocks glass, so a short one, not a tall one. And you're gonna want like fresh ice. If you have a big cube, so I have like a single big cube, right? We are then going to strain our cocktail into the glass okay. all right and then the last detail here is an orange peel so you're gonna take your orange peel with the outside yeah it'll give it like a little citrus a little sweet citrus so we're gonna express the oils from the peel into the drink so i'm just gonna i can literally see the you could, you know, if you're close enough, you could see it. But I could literally see it like spraying out, and then we'll just drop it into our glass. Nice. And there you go. Simple, old fashioned. That's it. Nice. You can and literally you do get, this on a plane. Yeah. And you get the whole kit, and it's a mini kit, so you can literally do it on a plane. You um, can literally do it on a plane. I and that's totally it. agree with some people here saying this is a really good uh, Christmas gift for coworkers. Like, that's perfect. It is a yeah. great gift for coworkers. We're shipping them around all over the place for, I mean, especially during these times. I mean, with all the shutdowns and things happening again, which is crazy. You can't yeah. go get a drink anywhere. So you don't need to be a mixologist to do this for yourself. That's for sure. You can totally do this on your own. And that's really the beauty of rum also. Um, you can't, tequila, like, all right, if you're, pretty good you can make like you know drinks with tequila but like rum you literally just don't need that many ingredients you could just do rum like yeah. any good rum i'm not even saying just coconut cartel but like rum gets a bad rap sometimes but like a good rum an aged one is like a bourbon so like make like you know make any type of boozy drink with it or even a highball just put a little you know soda water with a spritz of citrus or if you want to put a, a cola in there go for it i love like olipop is like an awesome cola i don't know if you've ever tried it i love mixing yeah. that with cartel so Super easy to drink at home, and uh, it only has one gram of sugar per serving. So, like, also not sugar water, which I will debunk right now. <laughs> Good, very important. I mean, that's what we want to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I am ready to go and get 
<laughs> my first bottle because it sounds delicious and rum is my favorite drink ever so I this can't go wrong I can't yeah yeah we can ship to Arizona yay <laughs> Um, so I, yeah. it was such a pleasure to have you here. Um, it Thanks was a really, really me. fun conversation. Um, also, if anyone is gifting this kit, you can literally just send this video to your coworkers and they'll know how to make the drink. Shopcoconutcartel.com. So, yeah. Easy. And so, Danny, is there anything else you want to tell us about? Any upcoming projects that you want to tell the audience before we go? Any upcoming project. This is a giant project, but and so we have new things coming up all the time. But I guess what I'll leave with is um, we're creating a rum brand, which means that we're going to have lots of things that encompass the word rum. Um, okay. So look out for maybe some new flavor expressions, maybe mm. some new cocktail expressions and things. So uh that will be coming out soon and we'll make sure to notify you so you can let people know yeah please do and please make it available for shipping <laughs> it is everything's going to be available for shipping that's the beauty of this one of the silver linings of covid is that like the ability to ship and do you know e-commerce for alcohol yeah. brands for craft brands now that are struggling a lot because restaurants and bars are closed like guys if you're out there and you're going to buy any spirit i'm not even just saying i'm not saying wrong but any spirit go for the craft distillery stuff. Like these guys are struggling and they're like locally, you know, making this stuff in cities all over the United States. So if you can, if you can choose craft, if you can choose local, uh, that's super important. Yeah. Yeah. And so just remind us, where can we get Coconut Cartel? Shopcoconutcartel.com or you can go on our website, coconutcartel.co and we have stores all over the, we have stores in multiple states. So you can just put in your address and it'll find the closest store for you if you don't want to ship it. Wonderful. And what's your um, handle in all platforms? At Coconut Cartel. On everything. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. So thank you, thank so, you so much. much for your time. I really, no, really appreciate this conversation. Me. I'm yeah. glad. I mean, uh, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to be crazy on camera. So, <laughs> <laughs> anytime, our platform is open um, to you. And congrats you. again on Forbes Thirty Under Thirty. Thank you so 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 much. Yeah. Have an awesome holiday and uh, wear too. a mask. Yeah. You too. <laughs> Bye. Ciao. Bye.